were equally bad. Yesterday, head coach Matt Nagy was not taking all of this lying down. Listen to this. Whatever it is, I know this. Uh, we better wake our tails up. Every freaking coach on the on the staff, every player, better wake up and start start understanding where we're at. Have some personal pride. Have a freaking ses- sense of urgency. Yesterday was flat out embarrassing. Um, and and uh, our guys know it. That, I'm not telling you something they don't know. They know it. All right, so usually Swagoo was with us on Tuesdays. He will interpret what people say. But, Jeff, you're going to play the role of Swagoo today. As you heard Matt Nagy talking there, what do you think he was really saying? If I get fired, all you clowns getting fired too, Greeny. That's exactly what he's saying. Let me tell you, that is truth. You better believe that. You understand when that head coach goes, there's going to be a whole other crew comes in. They're going to be looking for their players, their type of players, their guys, all those things. That adage is as real as it gets. And Matt Nagy was putting everybody on notice, baby. When and if I go down, all y'all going with me. I ain't going solo. You know, so, Greg, I, I will admit that as I listened to it, I thought to myself, maybe the time for that speech that you sort of pulled out of the coach's speech handbook was before you got humiliated <laughs> on national television against your arch rival. At some point before you've lost five consecutive games. I, 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 it, it rang a little cold with me. What did you think of it? True. Uh, I, look, I, I think he's desperate. I mean, he, what, what else do you want him to say? I mean, he has right now a roster, especially on the offensive side, that is the worst in the NFL. We have a situation in which you have a quarterback conundrum, and I call it that because there's no other appropriate term because neither guy's <laughs> the answer. You have an offensive line that can't block anything they literally can't block out the sun on the beach and then you have (laughs) running game right now like montgomery i kind of like him but he's kind of a workhorse and he's getting 11 carries then you have a receiving core where your best receiver would be the fourth best receiver on the dallas cowboys and then hey just in case you want to mix it all up let's throw cordero patterson in at running back they'll never know what's going to come when we do that so they have all types of issues and it's not about the coaching as much as it is about the personnel their personnel is just down right bad and there's only so much you can do at the head coaching spot or at both coordinators when you have personnel that's just this far below what's necessary to be successful in the league all right i'm in on all of that so graziano let me turn to you so everyone talks about this being it for trubisky people are now starting to talk about it being it for matt Nagy. Uh, the person who put all of this together that that greg i think is is correctly pointing to is the general manager ryan pace what do we expect from the offseason in chicago dan Yeah, it's still early to say, but I think it's fair to say both of those seats are hot, right? Nagy, a head coach, and Ryan Pace as the GM. The Trubisky pick obviously falls on Ryan Pace. I mean, this was a draft that had Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes in it, and he traded up a pick to to take Trubisky ahead of both of those guys. He's got to wear that. Will he get a chance to fix it and pick the new quarterback? That's for Bears ownership to decide. But you can hear in Matt Nagy's voice. I'm from South Jersey. I know the accent, the Philly accent, right? I'm listening to Matt Nagy, and I'm thinking, this could be a radio caller in Philadelphia complaining about the Eagles. Like, they just sound like he has no That's idea right. what to make of the whole thing. That's a really bad situation for a head coach to be in at this point in the season. Yeah, what he actually was was a caller on Waddle and Sylvie on ESPN 1000 in Chicago calling and saying exactly that. Greg McElroy, we'll just play that one back and that'll go very well on the radio today. All right, guys, stick tight. We have much more NFL as we go. But to the college level, because there's been a lot of news around the Big Ten Conference. Let's start in Indiana, where head coach Tom Allen confirmed the bad news. Starting quarterback Michael Penix Jr. tore his ACL Saturday. He will miss the rest of the year. It's been such a good season for them. Elsewhere, Northwestern Minnesota, set for this Saturday, will not be played. It's been canceled because of COVID issues within the Minnesota program. And then, after having their game with Illinois scheduled for this past weekend canceled because of COVID, Ohio State is now at risk of missing their next game against Michigan State as well. And of all of these, that is probably the most significant. And let's bring in our crew. And we have questions in college football. We get the answers from Heather Dinich and Paul Feinbaum and Greg with us as well here. Heather, let's start with Ohio State and the likelihood of them playing a game this weekend. What is the latest? Well, Greeny, don't rule it out because Ohio State is trying its best to play that game. I can tell you that on Monday, any players who were not in isolation or quarantine returned to the Woody Hayes Athletic Center for small group workouts. 
all meetings are still being held virtually. A school spokesman told me this morning that if they do play against Michigan State, Coach Ryan Day cannot be on the sideline. He cannot and will not coach that game per CDC guidelines. He'll still be in isolation. Larry Johnson would coach if they play. Ryan Day, the earliest he could return is Monday. Okay, so let's now live in a world where they can't play this weekend. Explain to everyone who doesn't already know, Heather, why that is so significant. The current benchmark to compete in the Big Ten championship game is six games. If they don't play Michigan State and they play Michigan, they beat Michigan, they're 5-0. and oh. But remember, on Champions Weekend, every team in the Big Ten is still playing. That would give Ohio State an opportunity to potentially be lined up against another Big Ten respectable opponent, punctuate its resume with a decent win, and finish 6-0 without a conference championship game. At that point, they would still be considered by the selection committee because there's no benchmark, no minimum threshold to compete in a semifinal. However, they would be missing the conference championship title, which is a tiebreaker used by the committee to compare similar teams and so they might play against i'm just throwing out the teams that could be there wisconsin might be there iowa might be there at that point um it would be the likeliest scenario so paul i'll put it to you because no one's opinion on this stuff i think carries more weight a 6-0 ohio state team without a big 10 championship would that team belong in the college football playoff in your opinion i think you'd have to consider but but greeny we're, I think we're all missing the point, especially the Big Ten. Why don't they go back and change the rules again? I mean, this is not like some Supreme Court ruling that has held up for 200 <laughs> years. They, they, they are making it up as they go along. They canceled the season on August 11th. They came back. Then they put in all these protocols. Go back in there and change it again. Who cares? I mean, it's, it, the, the, whole, the whole college football season has been turned upside down anyway. Why make it difficult when... In the end, or in the beginning, uh, the, the, the Big Ten came back for Ohio State, so don't leave your best team and your best hope uh, on the side of the road uh, naked and getting uh, run over by cars. I mean, prop them up and find them a way back into the Big Ten championship game. <laughs> what an image that is. I don't know why you threw in naked, but I liked it. Anyway, so, uh, Greg, let me come to you. <laughs> they could just be on the side of the road getting run over and fully dressed, but that's neither here nor there. Greg. Uh, same question to you. <laughs> if, if, if in a world where, where Ohio State is 6-0 and without a conference championship, do they belong in the playoff? 6-0 and I could rally behind, but anything less, I'd have a difficult time, Greeny. And that's because at that point, it's an incomplete grade. Now, we can use the eye test as best as humanly possible under the circumstances. Everyone's getting measured by a different grading protocol right now, which is challenging. So the eye test is going to be more important here in 2020 than ever before when it comes to the College Ball Playoff Committee. But we have seen teams that have passed the eye test through the first half of the season. I can think of two examples off the top of my head. One in 2011 with Illinois. One in 2016 with the Baylor Bears. Both teams, Greeny, started the season 6-0, and only to finish the season 6-6. Six and six. So I'm not suggesting that Ohio State would all of a sudden fall off the face of the earth in the second half of the season, but it's very incomplete. We should reward teams that have played games, especially a team like Cincinnati who's played double-digit games against decent competition, especially, too, when considering Ohio State's one significant win, if they go the rest of the way, might be against the Indiana Hoosiers, who are now without their quarterback and could very possibly come limping into the finish. So uh, I just don't Heather, know if Ohio I mean, no State's going to have enough on their resume to justify it. Sorry, uh, Greg. Heather, no one is closer to the committee than you are, but these are, of course, completely unprecedented circumstances, so there is no history to fall back on. What sense do you get of how they would view a 6-0 non-conference champion? I can't answer that without knowing what happens in the ACC and the SEC, because if you have Clemson beat Notre Dame, then they would be measured against Ohio State in the same way, without a conference title. If Florida beats Alabama,